of Egypt. Nuno Gomez's team is trying to figure out their next move. The red signal bag that should contain a brass disc marking Nuno's record descent is empty and his girlfriend and crew have no way of knowing if he is alive or dead. Eleven a.m. At 100 meters, contact is finally re-established. The first safety diver finds Nuno Gomez alive but nearly out of air. He already has exhausted every breath of every tank he carried to the bottom of the Red Sea. Only a small bailout bottle and the experience not to panic has brought him this far. But that tank, the margin of his survival, is almost empty. Nuno's girlfriend Len resurfaces with a frightening bulletin. Now the team begins a frantic relay to secure the life of a man who brought them here. The Mixmaster's carefully prepared cylinders must be taken down to Nuno, each tank calibrated to an exact depth, each breath ticking towards survival or disaster. Nuno has reached a depth of 271 metres, the deepest dive ever in the Red Sea, but short of the world record he desperately wanted. He must remain underwater for another eight hours, hanging onto his guideline, slowly releasing the bubbles of gas that extreme pressure has forced into his bloodstream. Communicating through basic hand signals to the friends who replenish his air supply, Nuno explains that his regulator, taken far beyond its normal limit, failed and forced him to abort the descent. As the afternoon drags on, the support divers also need to decompress before surfacing. They and Nuno are using up more air than can be resupplied from the boat. The South Africans are running out of divers, out of air and out of time. He's not even disappointed or anything, you know, it's just one of those facts of life. Three p.m., eight hours into the dive. With the hard work of the support divers and their life-saving relay of air tanks, the situation has stabilized. But Nuno is still four hours from safety. Finally, at seven o'clock, Nuno Gomez returns to the sunlit world. The cave diver from South Africa has achieved a personal best depth in open water. His victory and his disappointment are testimony to the wonders of scuba and the limits of technology beneath the sea, where a journey of only 300 metres becomes an epic struggle between breath and death. Exhausted from his ordeal, Nuno tells the crew how his regulator failed due to the crushing pressure making it impossible to hook up to his backup systems, forcing him to rely on his bailout bottle and abort the descent. I went on to my backup and I ran out of air. And then I just made it to the first deco stage and the second. There you see they were all empty. And then Gareth was about an hour late. I, if I didn't take that uh, uh, air tank to 70, I would have been gone. The weary team stows the dive gear for the long journey home to South Africa, while Nuno recovers with a boost of intravenous fluid. There is talk of a possible future mission and of today's very narrow escape. I mean, to run out of air at 280 meters is not a joke. But with my experience, that's what pulled me through. I used all my nine lives on this one. Does this mean you don't have any more nine lives left? I've used most of them now. Okay, good. So you're not going to do it again? Huh? Well, you go again. Okay, 
got a hard head. I don't know. Give him a couple of weeks to think about it. Time to ask a question. I don't know. The dive is over. Nuno Gomez.